It's time. It's been a long road, but welcome to Shadowbringers. Before we get into it for real, let me remind you of the following. Endwalker is coming this November, and being an MMO, things can change every single patch. Belts, for example, are on their way out. Sage and Reaper will start at level 70 and follow similar patterns as to Samurai, Red Mage, Gunbreaker, and Dancer with the Artifact Armor. You won't get a level 80 set. And a pre-order of Endwalker gives this earring that boosts EXP up to level 80. I will not be wearing it for this video. But now, that about covers everything I wanted to mention beforehand. Let's walk into Seeker's Trench and begin the turning point for the rest of our adventure. Now, now I have you. Let expanse contract. Eon become instant. Throw wide the gates that we may pass. Endless dreams I awake. Something vague, yet urgent, calls me to action once more. To dizzying heights it rises. Spire. Its tip threatening to pierce the blinding canopy. There, it will all begin anew. Between dark and light. The pure and the corrupt. The one true struggle. Welcome to the first, and welcome to current expansion. I will be going over many things in relation to it being current over the next three videos, but once Endwalker comes out, some things might no longer be true. This is to prepare you for Endwalker, ultimately. We'll be dealing with that expansion for the next two years, so preparing you for the inevitable two years, and even any expansions afterwards, this is a good time to do that preparation. Also, if you have not watched the Shadowbringers intro cutscene on the title screen, do so now. But now welcome to the Crystarium. Our main home for the foreseeable future. And our first rewards. We'll be given many gear coffers along the main story to make sure we keep up on gear. If you are behind, be ready to open and wear what is inside, if you have not fully geared up on Skaven gear. Our first real quest will be to explore the Crystaria, meanwhile. 
and Wall were immediately told to go to the Aetherite. I highly, HIGHLY recommend heeding this warning. The moment you are freed, attune to the Aetherite. You will be told you can easily teleport to and fro, from the source and to the first. If, for whatever reason, you left before attuning, you can return here from the same way you got in. I also recommend setting this as your home point. We will return here a lot, and interdimensional travel is expensive. But moving on into exploring, I want to point out that this is one big map for a town, and it is very vertical. While this stairway heads down into the depths, everything to the left is ground floor, and everything to the right is the level above the Aetherite. Said above level is one of our objectives anyway, so we'll be going there, but this is the crafter and gatherer hub. Whenever you decide to start on your gathering and crafting adventures of Shadowbringers, make this your first visit. And be sure to attune to the Aetherite shards you pass for easy travel around the map. We'll also be visiting the markets in this quest, but not for the markets. This can be a very confusing expansion due to an entire switch of naming conventions. Pay very close attention to Bragi's conversation if you don't want to be confused when the name Mistol comes up many times in lieu of Mikote. We'll then get to move on, get some more gear coffers, and yet immediately get another tour of the city. The market area returns with two major bits, the first being that we have another return of Allegan Tomestones. We'll worry about those in the next video. And the second thing of note is we're given a way to access our retainers. It's a bit hand wavy, but now here's an actual lore reason why we can now do all of our shopping here without returning back to the source. The Crystarium is your new shopping hub if you will it. And then finally, we have our room at the Pendants. We shall be spending our time here a lot and learning many, many important things in what would normally be just another inn room. I know you. You're the warrior of light from the source. My real name is Ardbet. I used an alias in the source, the Dark Swan, looking back. When we next visit the Crystal Exarch, we'll be given a split that both must be done like the last however many times this has happened. Just pick up both quests and move out for our first unlocks. First, and most importantly, is back at the Pendants. We have Clan Nutsy, our Shadowbringers hunt group. They have their own unique currency of sacks of nuts, and follow the same pattern most other things do. And since you're probably level 73 on at least one of your jobs because of Stormblood, pick up the second tier of hunt quests while you are here. Also visit the stables next to the hunt area for one of your quest targets. And say hi to all the chocobos and our new friends, the Amaro. They are good birds. Up above in the Crystalline Mean, is our Shadowbringers update to the Sightseeing Log. They may not be part of the Ironheart Clan, by blood, but they are in spirit. Finally, let's finish up our first Crystarium visit with the final Aetherite Shard location. We'll get a teleport to the Lake Land in the Aetherite menu, and next to these main story targets is an Amaro Keep. These are the same as Chocobo and Falcon Porters in previous areas, but by now, you probably have no use for these whatsoever. Try to pick them up as you see them, just in case, but you're probably not going to ever use them. Do whichever story section first that you wish, but I will be starting with our search for Alice. Arm Arang. From this parched earth, the nation of Nabath Arang once rose. When I journeyed here long ago, I spoke with a sun-weathered elder. He told me Armoreng meant majestic land in the language of his people. And so it might still be, were it not for the light's unrelenting onslaught. 
here in Armoring, remember your chocobo is going to be a powerful ally in these unexplored zones, and that aether currents are still a thing to keep track of. I will always remind you of this. This zone in particular is also split in two, east and west. Do not bother at all trying to reach the west side. Like normal, we'll come back to that later. And finally, note the music. Amarang in general has one of, if not the single best field music in the entire game. I personally recommend going into sound settings and turning off mount music for the duration of the expansion. But eventually we'll reach town, speak to an Amaro Keep and see why Amaro Keeps are so especially bad in this expansion, attune to the Aetherite, and notice the Aether Current in the back of town. Again, east and west are split. Come back for this when you reach the west side of the area. Then try and eat a kobold. On our way out, you'll meet Tesleen, the most important character in the expansion. Pay very close attention to her. And Halric, him too. But not so much attention that you leave behind the blue quest that has appeared after meeting her. You may notice the little arrow in the name of all but very specific Shadowbringers side quests. This is because of Quest Sync. The quests will now be all level 70, but will change in level to match your level. If you pick up a side quest as a level 75, the side quest will boost its difficulty and rewards to be level 75. There's still side quest EXP amounts, but it makes them a bit more viable for leveling further jobs or catching up on main story quest level if you fall behind. And for a final note of Armorang, fates also are more viable than ever. Not for their EXP, but unique rewards only found with the shared fate system. Completing fates in Shadowbringer zones will reward you with bicolor gemstones. You can check this currency in the Travel Tab's new Shared Fate option. There's also a progress bar for each area. You need 36 fates per zone to max them out. While exploring the zones, you have all the reason to kill fates as you pass them. You'll meet a vendor to spend these stones soon enough, and there are many rewards unique to these vendors. But now let's head over to Alphino's side of the story. Frozen. Time itself takes a breath. At light's edge, all is perfectly still. The world captured in a painting, locked in a moment. Once again, this zone is broken in half, north and south this time. Do not attempt to scale the cliff. Instead, attempt to do more blue side quests. But this time, after completing the first one and getting an Aether Current, the second quest will also be blue. This is correct, but will not matter for anything for a very long time. Leave this here for now, unless you really want to get it done now. On the note of that first side quest for an Aether Current though, here is what your Aether Current window should look like for Kalusha and Armorang when you are done. The rest of the currents are in the other halves of the maps. Also, I have some Lakeland progress, but we'll see that area is much easier than these first two. But now let's advance to the other main town of the expansion, Yomor. Redemption is beyond. Before heading upstairs, take a trip around the outside for the mini Aetherite. Then on your way up, grab the one in the middle section as well. There's also a secondary hunt board here, if for whatever reason you need it. Then finally the main Aetherite in the bustling plaza. Okay, not the main Aetherite. You cannot grab this, it's just fancy decoration for now. Be upset you don't get a teleport location? but be immediately cheered up by fan-favorite characters, the Chais. Either way, both pathways will have us reunite with the twins, and have them and us experience some hard truths to this world. 
but with both twins found, we can return home to regroup. Only for the first major threat to show up. Out in Lakeland, we have the Aetherite in Austal, and near that, an exclamation mark on the minimap. This is our first Bicolor Gemstone vendor. There is one per area. Keep an eye out for the exclamation marks for more vendor locations. Again, one per map. And this is why there is a progress bar per zone. The zone shop will expand when you rake it up. And some unique shops open when you've completed every zone. And some items, again, only come from these shops. So depending on what you want to collect or craft or whatever, these may be a very good option for you to invest in. You can maybe even make millions selling the items within. Now finally, our first major new feature for the expansion. Trusts. These are NPC allies that you can run all the main story dungeons of Shadowbringers with. You are given a preset group of party members to run them with that will always amount to a full light party, no matter which job you come as. The first run, I recommend bringing Lena and the Exarch along for reasons that will only be clear in the next main episode. Now, as for trusts, do not try to do big pools or anything fancy with them. Their abilities are very, very limited, and they're basically programmed to always amount to a half an hour run. The healers seem to only do GCD healing, and very little of it. The DPS trust do is almost exclusively single target attacks. They don't do AoE. And the tanks don't have the same level of cooldowns a real tank would have. They are, on purpose, limited. But you're skipping queues, skipping the need to speak to people, and still getting a run that should only take 30 minutes tops. I ran every dungeon with trusts, and every run took under 30 minutes with zero deaths. So there's that at least. Oh, but you get less loot than a normal run, but nobody will be rolling against you, so all of the loot is yours. You can still run with normal party groups in Duty Finder, but trusts have plenty of flavor text to experience, and more reasons to experience them as we go on. Behold, the monster's power is broken, and the world twisted by its touch returns to its rightful form. With the Light Warden defeated and Night returned, we head back outside for the notice that we can now rerun dungeons with the trust window. So if for whatever reason you want to run it multiple times, here you go. No need for other players. I however recommend waiting to rerun dungeons unless you need the experience. We'll see why later. On our return to town, we'll be directed to the wandering stairs for the next major new feature. Roll quests. These are replacing job quests going forward. You'll have already noticed that you're gaining skills without job quests, as I mentioned, and I show that they stop in Stormblood. Instead, we have a set of four quest chains. One for tanks, healers, physical DPS, and mages. Yes, ranged and melee are combined into one set of role quests. In Endwalker, the role quests we get will properly be segmented into melee, ranged, and mage. And you must do these. To complete the main story, one set of role quests must be completed first. So you don't need to keep up with them consistently for any skills or such, 
but be ready to spend a bit of time and progression doing them before the finale. This was introduced to us on our way to bed. After a nice rest, we'll exit out into the pendants like normal. Instead of continuing forward, make a hard left and go into the room. This is a very easy to miss Aether Current for Lakeland. I actually did miss this on my blind playthrough and didn't get this until after finishing the next area. And I especially warn you because a bunch more current quests will appear when you reach the quest, the Oracle of Light. And this is the exact moment that you can now earn flight for the first zone. And it makes climbing up the tower to continue the story all the easier. If you miss that quest, you'll have to go back for it. Also, quick note, you are not losing your gear for this next quest. It is just temporary glams. So if you feel like Ranji is overpowered because you lost all your gear, no, he's just a very hardy old man. And so is our hardy old man, now wielding the gunblade in our stead, as we make our escape to the next area. Not so long ago, here in the shadow of the northern ranges, lay the great kingdom of Verbert, a nation with a proud history that the Sin Eaters cut short, just like all the rest. Since that time, these lands have become a haven for Fey folk. Dreamers frolicking amidst the ruins of a forgotten realm. Our reward for the escape is the same set of glam we were just forced to use. And we shall never see it again. As we move forward, there will be three main story quests to do and a blue side quest with a current. Pick all of these up and, while you only need to do the one side quest, you should do the entire storyline. It may be one of the most interesting side quest chains in the game. And it has its own little unlock for a vendor trade. It's not really all that important though. Beaver. And let me just say, this Feo Ool calling quest is blatantly making fun of all of you who have issues with chat prompt quests. Have fun. Smiley face. Continue on, get more allies with you, and you'll have a lot more variety of choice in who you bring along for trusts going forward. Well, as I said, every dungeon is a preset group you can bring, but going forward, it will be better for how little choice you had in Home Mr. Switch. And towards the end of our stay in Ilmeg, we'll meet this big bird and learn just how much he cared for his friend Artbert. His name was Artbert, and he was my friend. Thank you, Seto. On a happier note, FUGA! And our first trial for Shadowbringers, Titania. Trials do not have trust. Only dungeons do. So be ready to put in effort. And arguably, trials in previous expansion leveling curves were super easy to do in comparison. With Shadowbringers being current content, the trial you are about to face is about average more difficult than any other leveling trials. Nothing extremely difficult, but more so than in past. This may change once Endwalker hits, and those fights become the hard ones. And this time, our return to town will be a bit less joyous. We instead meet a character who chews the scene no matter what they do. Emmett here even offers his presence, and when he does, be sure to talk to him every chance you get. He has some very extremely interesting dialogue. Dialogue we can ponder when we go to bed again. After another sleep, a pixie will have placed themselves outside of the pendants. This is our unlock for the Dream Spinners, our first beast tribe for Shadowbringers. 
This is the battle focus tribe and comes with all the same perks as any other beast tribe. EXP, unique rewards, etc. All the while, the story will be slowly leveling up and handing us blue spirit gear now. This is the first set of gear that will be stronger than Skaven, but only if the substats are good. Again, if you are not already I-400, do be sure to take the upgrades. Especially if you are dungeoning with normal players. The difficulty of dungeons is only going to increase as we enter the new zone. But... Kupo? That will seem a lot less amusing when we are forced to kill them. Be ready also for an increase in difficulty in humor. For the least funny, worst thing the fanbase has ever latched onto is here. The Great Serpent of Ranka. It's also a side quest chain you must do for an unlock. And you may want to do this now because the unlock isn't too far in the future. The final quest of this chain being Snakes in the Grass. Later on in the second town of the area, we have another chain of quests from an Aether Current quest. This one ends with Hearts as One, and upon completing this quest, and the Great Serpent Chain, a new quest will appear at the entrance of the village, Protectors of the Wood. Worry about this quest after you complete the dungeon of the area, as this is the final side quest to do. Complete the main story quest, bearing with it, which like I said is after the dungeon, and a final quest will appear in Slitherbow. This is the actual unlock quest for the Katari, another beast tribe. This one, Disciple of a Land Only. This is not like the Namazu. Crafters can't do this tribe. Only Botanist, Miner, and Fisher. Given that was the level 75 dungeon, you may be level 76 now. So now you are able to pick up the final tier of the Shadowbringers daily hunts. I do recommend it, like always. If even for the occasional, free EXPs. On our next trip out of town, we shall reach the western half of Armoreng, which means it's time to start looking for the rest of the Aether Currents in the area, including that one over Mord Suk that has been taunting us since the beginning. I also wanted to take a little note here. I fell behind on EXP because I was sharing quest EXP with a gunbreaker for a while. If you only give EXP to one job, even if you start at level 70, you're not going to fall behind the EXP curve. But share EXP around, and you will maybe hit a wall. It is very hard to do this expansion, and you can just go do roll quests to catch up. That's a lot of EXP that you have waiting for you. And then there's not much to make note of for quite a while. Not until our return to Yulmore. We'll have a big solo duty to do, and then afterwards finally see ourselves able to attune to the Aetherite. Be absolutely sure to do this, as this is a very important teleport point for the level 80 content, and just in general. Also, again, do your roll quests. Tank roll quests actually pass through here, so it's a good two for one if you haven't been doing it. You're running out of time before needing to finish them. Speaking of finishing quests off though, this is now a very good time to start finishing that side quest chain we left in right. The unlock isn't far off now, so pick it up now and keep going as you do main story quest activities. And finish on the quest right for the job. Then head up the ladder for the extreme pumping music that signals we are in the final stretch of the story, and the final stretch of Kalusha, which means Aether Currents once more, including side quest ones, and just like the Katari, a second line of blue quests to follow in the Dwarven Town. Which also, side note, only Lalafells can enter these houses. Stupid starch people. But upon completion of this chain of side quests, you'll get a lolly ho and then another side quest chain to appear. Run it to the rescue will appear, and completion of that 
will have the Dwarf Beast Tribe quest appear in right. This is for crafters only, gatherers cannot join. Again, we will be back to these later. One other quest in town is Word About Comra. This has no apparent use, even after completing it. Let's just say, when the main story brings you to Comra, do the quest while you're there. This does have a use and we will come back for it later. But for right now, it's not going to lead to anything. But that covers it all. The team is assembled, the path to the final leveling dungeon has been made, and the end of our fight is here. Make your team, fight your way through, and reach the crown of the Immaculate. Queue up, and face your destiny, Warrior of Darkness. When the deed is done, you will have the option to leave if you wish, and return if needed. For you will be warned upon talking to Reen, there will be no turning back. That was obviously not the final stretch now, wasn't it? There is but one true finale. You stand at a precipice as we enter the Tempest. You stand at the precipice, hero. Journey unto the heart of darkness. Finish it. Once more, as always, we have a way to walk out and return without teleporting, like all zones. And while you may think there is no eighth occurrence to find here, oh, I can tell you you're wrong. Keep looking, there's more to find. But also be wary that one of them is going to be below you. Worry about that one later as you continue into town. Here we have another Aetherite and one final gemstone trader, and will soon be sent out to meet a familiar face and familiar attitude. This is where your role quest will finally come to fruition. You cannot continue beyond this point without first returning to finish your role quests. If you did not start them, remember they are in the Crystarium at the bar. But if you did start them and forgot where they led to, Check your completed journal section. Roll quests share space with job quests. The NPCs move around a bunch, and the main story guide does not actually have roll quests listed. I feel like this will be something they add in in future, but for now, use the completed list and finish the quests. The main quest will then become completable the moment you finish, so go turn it in and get a nice big kettle. I mean lamp. In addition to the lamp, you can also pick up yourself artifact armor and a weapon. Be absolutely sure to grab these before continuing on. These will unlock for every job you have at level 80 and the roll quest completed for that roll. So notice I don't have anything but warrior gear in the shop, despite having tank roll quest done. They gotta hit 82. Geared up and returning to town, we will be ready to head downwards. But don't, not yet. Check your eighth occurrence. Your currents probably look like this. You are missing one. There's five you should have before going down. To the east of the Ondo Cups is this little section of the caves. In one of the alcoves is the fifth eighth occurrence for exploration. Pick it up, and then... Head on your final journey.
Welcome to Amarok. The last three quest currents are here in blue quests, and there is an Aetherite you should be sure to attune to. The main story quest, A Greater Purpose, shall have your final Aether Current of the expansion, and your final access to flight. This is your last chance to talk to your allies before the final battle. It's time for Shadowbringers. Behold the coming oblivion. It was the end of our era and the beginning of our great work. The waters ran red with blood. Just a little further. And you will see the end of a world. Nevertheless. If you had the strength to take another step, could you do it? Could you save our worlds? What? By myself? Together, let expanse contract, Eon become instant. Champions from beyond the rift, heed my call. Damn! 
burn you all! Very well. Let us proceed to your final judgment. But come. Let us cast aside titles and pretense and reveal our true faces to one another. I am Hades, he who shall awaken our brethren from their dark slumber. For the world is a tapestry of fates, interwoven and inseparable. And we who strive to better it cannot choose but make difficult decisions. For naught of worth was ever achieved without sacrifice. Remember. Remember us. Remember that we once lived. And thus must man ever struggle to weigh life against loss.
Tis good to see you awake, Rahatia. As ether obeys the cycle, as death and decay gives way to new life, So too do the memories we share inspire others to rise to greatness. For we who walk before may lead those who walk after. Your road goes ever on, as does your story, as does your legacy. Is the hero's lot to touch the lives of countless others? Excuse me, you're the warrior of darkness, aren't you? Where are you from, really? And how did you get to be so strong? Thank you for joining me on this journey. Shadowbringers is a turning point for many reasons. For the game, and for me personally. And I am glad you all took this specific journey with me, and why I indulged myself with the storytelling part of this video. During the editing of this, I noticed during that final scene, look closely at Ardbert's axe. The bloodstains are gone. The regret he had in life for causing the flood has been paid back in full. By joining with us, his conscience became clear at the end. We have only just begun with Shadowbringers, though. There's a lot more to do. May the power of Ananid Hogsley waste to your enemies. And the extra special thanks to all my patrons on Patreon. Without all of your support, I'm not sure I would have been able to take this series as far as it has. I might have just stopped after Heaven's Word. But I thank you all the same. I would like to give the extra special thanks that they deserve to... Arya Deva, Amen Al-Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Body Clock, Ethan... Ethan Olson, Evan, Kyle Steinhauser, Meowfi, Mizella, Scott Stanley, Valor LLC, and Yvonne the Moose. Again, thank you all, and I will see you next time.